Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's me, Whiskey Hotel. Back with my NCAA Road to Glory. This week I'm playing Utah State, which is kind of a big game. They won the division last year. They're 0-2 right now, so I need to beat them. Before I play them, I'm going to buy this. You can always use agility. It helps out a lot. But holy shit, do I have some stories for you. Um, from this past weekend, they, I, whew, where to even begin? I guess it makes sense to start chronologically, right? So Friday, I uh, go to play pool, which is per my usual thing because it's free at this certain bar on Friday nights, and I am playing fucking lights out, like it's. It was awesome. Like any pool player will tell you that they have like certain shots that they will make a hundred percent of the time, and then there are other shots that they know are their weakness, so they purposely avoid them. There were no shots like that this night. Like I have shots that I don't like to shoot. I was shooting those confidently, blasting them in, kicking my friend's ass. Like, and I play a lot of pool. My friends play a lot of pool. Like they're not like bar trash they're fucking good players and I probably won like 10 games in a row and then um, my buddy Wags beat me after that he went on a little run of his own ooh that was a good run and uh, won like four in a row and then somebody wanted to play doubles so I was his doubles partner, so we held the table for five hours. It was just awesome. Like, it's nights like that that keep me coming back to pool when you just start kicking some serious ass. So that was really fun. And also, I got like totally shit tanked because lately I've been on a bit of a beer kick. Like, I've been trying out like high-end beers, like micro brews or whatever, just kind of working on my my palate, I guess you could say, like, oh my god, we didn't get that, that's embarrassing, um, but Friday night I decided that because the bar I was at was having $1.75 gym beams that I would drink double beams and coke all night, and it was awesome like whiskey is my go-to I like whiskey more than any other kind of alcohol but I had been neglecting it for too long so as soon as I started on those beam and cokes I was having a good time that was a lot of fun and then after that I went and got some pizza which is delicious and then went with my friends to go ice skating and I I don't claim to be an awesome ice skater but I'm competent I'll say like I can skate around I can turn I can stop without falling down but as Nick Swardson would say old booze brain you know I'm fucking like at least eight drinks deep ice skating like a fucking idiot after 10 o'clock when they turn the lights out I try to do some stupid shit with a hockey stick I don't like I can I can skate but I cannot skate and control a puck that equals bad news for me and so I fucking eat like the biggest bag of shit like falling right on my ass hard like slammed and that was uh that was all the ice skating I was ready for like I could barely walk um <laughs> I just kind of sat off to the side for the next couple hours waiting for them to be done <coughs> excuse me oh look at that lead block and so that was Friday, and then I woke up Saturday. Seriously, what the fuck is happening in the red zone? If you take me out in the red zone, I'm gonna fucking murder you, Lane Kiffin. You fucking 
piece of shit coach. You were bogarting my touchdowns like a bastard. Anyway, Saturday, could barely walk. Sat around the house all day. Until the UFC was on at another bar I like to go to. So I go there with some friends, watch the UFC. Great, great card. There were a lot of really good fights. That dude that, like, did the hamstring submission, that shit was nuts. Um, like, I was just at the gym, like, a half hour ago, and I always stretch afterwards. And I was just... Oh, get it. I'm gone, baby. Who needs a fucking red zone? I'll just do that every time. Um, I was doing a hamstring stretch, and I was, like, just imagining how much that would fucking hurt. Some dude, like, cranking your leg up to your head. That's pretty maniacal. And then Ronda Rousey gets, like, the huge win. I was stoked for that. That, that chick is so awesome. Like... Oh, get juked, son. Um, it's crazy that everybody that fights her knows exactly what she's going to try and do. But nobody can stop her. That's fucking impressive. Um, oh, get the corner. And then after the UFC, a couple of my friends, different friends, wanted to play pool. Like, if I'm in a bar, I'm probably going to play pool because if I don't play it, like, somebody I know knows that I'm really good at pool and they want to play me. It's uh, just the cycle, I guess. But So I'm playing pool. This, like, drunk-ass chick just, like, randomly comes up to me and was not shy about the fact that she was interested in me like it was like it was it was on from like the very first sentence like and that was pretty cool like you know eventually like she's just buying me and my friends drinks which was cool uh can't complain about that things get actually a little physical in the bar like she's making out with me in the bar uh, not typically my style I don't like to have like public displays like that but it happened I was just drunk enough to let it happen and eventually culminates in me playing her in a game where she says that if I beat her I can take her home and it was like well obviously I'm going to beat you I'm a billion times better than you. So I beat her. We go back to my place. We don't have sex. We just make out a lot. She stays the night. Probably easily could have gotten some sex, but uh, I don't know. We just kind of passed out. So wake up the next morning. Spend the morning with her. Like it wasn't the, like the situation where like you wake up and you're next to an ugly chick. It was like the situation where I wake up and I'm next to like a psychopath, like a crazy chick. Like she lost like half the shit that she owned. Like she just started saying all this stuff, like telling me about her family. Like, oh, my dad lives in Colombia and he pops pills, and my brother is a fucking meth head in Billings, and it's like what the fuck are you telling me like oh I used to be a stripper like all this shit like that and I'm just listening to this like oh my god like do I really want to be a part of this like cause I like I don't really that's not my type of chick I don't like crazy ass chicks like that like oh she also told me like I just broke up with my boyfriend you better watch out for him like he'll try and kick your ass and it's just like what the fuck am I doing here with you? And so... But I hadn't decided that I was, like, gonna bail yet. Um, oh, get that shit. Damn it. And uh, so I, I take her home. I'm like, yeah, I'll talk to you. Talk to you soon or whatever. A couple of hours go by. She starts, like, calling me. And I don't want to talk to her. I just... 
I didn't want, it didn't matter who was calling. I didn't want to talk to anybody. Um, because I was just chilling out by myself. And so then she started sending me texts, like, and this is literally what the text says. I want to fuck you. And it's like, okay. And I was like, like, that's cool, I guess. Like, personally, <laughs> it's a stupid thing I like to do, but there's, whenever I'm dating a girl, there always seems to be one, like, pivotal text message that they'll send me that pretty much tells me that we're about to have sex and uh, just as some sort of weird collection I like to save those text messages like I have one that says like oh I can't wait to show you my skills and skills are in quotes there's another one that says like if you stay over at my apartment tonight you'll have a good time there's another one that says I want to jump your bones like that's just something I do. It's stupid and probably immature, but it's something I do. So I save that text, and I'm like, you know, at this point, I'm still like considering it. I'm like, yeah, I might, I might have sex with her. Like, why wouldn't I? And uh, I don't reply. And then a couple more hours go by, and she calls me like three times in a row. I answer on the third time. She's like, what are you doing? It's ten o'clock. I'm like, I'm about to go buy some groceries for the week. And uh, she's like, oh, can I come? Come pick me up. And I'm like, can pick you up? You want to come grocery shopping? She's like, yeah, come pick me up. I'm at the Buffalo Jump, which is a strip club like 20 miles out of town. And like something about what she just asked me to do like just was a deal breaker for me like it's like you want me to come pick you up at a strip club bring you back to my apartment so we can have sex after like you want me to drive 20 miles out of my way at 10 o'clock to pick you up from a strip club so we can have sex after you telling me that like your entire family is like addicted to drugs you used to be a stripper, your ex-boyfriend's gonna kick my ass, and I was just like, no, I'm not picking you up, like, I don't think we should hang out anymore, and I, I kiboshed it right there, like, I've never in my life shut down a chick in that fashion, but it was just like, all of a sudden, the clearest thing in the world that I did not want to associate with her even the slightest bit anymore and it was I feel really good about it uh, fuck that shit and and then today like she sends me more texts like sorry for being so crazy or whatever and I'm I'm not replying at all and, but I also woke up with, like, this weird pain, like, right next to my dick. Um, not related to her, I'm hoping. But, because uh, we didn't have sex. Thank God. Because if I had had sex with her, it would be, it would be a problem. Like, I would be connected to her somehow. And the first thing that comes to my mind is it feels like a hernia. And I do lift weights. I lift weights probably heavier than I should. So a hernia is a distinct possibility. And so I'm freaking out all day that I might have to get surgery to remove this hernia. I don't actually go to the doctor. But throughout the day, the pain goes away. It's no longer sensitive to touch. And so I decide that maybe I don't need to go to the doctor. Like, maybe I'll go tomorrow. But, I don't know. So now I'm kind of leaning towards the conclusion that when I fell and bashed my hip on the ice, I somehow racked my balls and my, like, groin area. And hopefully that's the case. I'm gonna, I, if it hurts tomorrow, I'm going to go to a doctor and see if I have a hernia. But I really hope that's not the case. Anyway, whew. That was a lot of shit to talk about.
I thought I was going to have time, but they simmed the fourth quarter. Sorry for talking so long. Thank you for watching my video. Maybe I'll see you next time. Later, dudes.